Hi, welcome to my channel. I wanted to talk a little bit about being vegan. I've been vegan for seven years. I just kind of want to talk about it a little bit because especially now it's becoming more and more popular. There's more companies that are coming out with options, which is awesome. And I just kind of want to talk about how I got introduced to it and just my thoughts on everything. If you're interested in veganism, if you're trying to eat less meat or dairy, maybe my experience could help you a little bit. So if you want to hear more, then keep watching. Hey, I'm editing this and I noticed that you can hear all the planes flying overhead. I live in a neighborhood where the flight path is like right over my apartment. So apparently my mic picked all that up. So hopefully it's not too annoying because it's probably going to be happening the whole video. Sorry. So I've been vegan for over seven years, just about seven years exactly, I think. And it's just a normal part of my life now. I know people always think that it's so hard and such a change and maybe it was at first but honestly it's just the way I live my life now and I don't think twice about it. The same with any habit you might have once you live your life a certain way it's not a struggle it's just regular. So to take it all the way back to the beginning I was raised in the Midwest which might not matter but you know Midwesterners really love cheese and dairy, so I grew up eating a ton of cheesy potato casseroles, lots of ice cream, lots of... My mom still buys multiple gallons of milk a week and drinks it all. Like, I don't even know. <laughs> like, just drinking it like water. Like, I'm just gonna get a glass of milk. My best friend Caitlin has been vegan since high school so my first introduction to veganism was in high school in the early 2000s and back then it was not a common diet. I saw her struggle eating pasta salad for every meal and just not having a lot of options available to her especially as a high schooler you don't really have a ton of your own money so it's hard to buy your own groceries and everything but she never complained, she never, she wasn't judgmental towards me or any of our other friends that ate on a standard American diet. She never pressured me or she was never preachy and at the time I didn't think much of it but looking back now I realize that that affected me positively because a running theme that I'm going to keep mentioning is leading by example and Vegans can get a bad rap for being extreme and preachy and all that and I'll admit when I first started getting more into it I was a little bit that way because when you kind of find out all the horrible stuff that goes on in the industry you can't help but be angry that you've basically been lied to and let on all for the sake of profit basically. I've learned to mellow and to calm down in that more people have come to me asking for advice or recommendations because I lead by positive example and I don't... I'm not preachy about it, that's all I'm trying to say. So I officially went vegetarian in 2009 after graduating college and this was basically just because I didn't want to buy and touch raw meat to cook for myself. So it started just by because I was lazy and grossed out by raw meat and I was fine with other people making it but I didn't want to touch it so that's how it started and then it just kind of snowballed from there and growing up my experience with eating vegetables was my mom microwaving frozen vegetables and not I don't even think she salted them so it was like yeah of course I thought vegetables were gross because I still don't like my vegetables that way. Just experimenting with recipes and cooking really made me fall in love with just the process of cooking and 
really realizing how much you could do with vegetables. I got really into finding recipes and I started getting into a lot of food blogs and this was before Pinterest started so I had to find the good recipes and the good food blogs the old-fashioned way which honestly I don't even remember what the old-fashioned way was maybe just Google. <laughs> I pretty much lived off of like those frozen french bread pizzas in college so I wasn't really into cooking up until that point at all. So it was great. I moved to Chicago in the spring of 2012. I lived in Ann Arbor in Michigan before that, which is, that's where the University of Michigan is. And so it's a university town and there's actually a pretty big veggie movement there. So I had some experience with finding good vegan food there, but moving to Chicago completely opened up everything. Like there was just so many, veggie restaurants and so many more options and so much more to try it was it was great coming from the suburbs most restaurants especially if they were just like standard restaurants the veggie option would be maybe pasta and salad and i don't i'm vegan but i really don't order salad i i want bread in chicago there's so many great vegan restaurants that are they are not in any way claiming to be healthy we've got the chicago niner which is all american comfort food they have mac and cheese fried wings biscuits and gravy like all the good carby stuff which is what i like i can live without meat and cheese but bread no 2013 is when i started fully transitioning it started off as a kind of personal challenge. During the week, Monday through Friday, I would eat totally plant-based and then I would allow myself on the weekends to like make eggs or if I went out for brunch, I was allowed to, allowed to order eggs and cheese and stuff like that. And after a while, I, I just naturally wanted to take it a step further and almost just see how long I could go without eating cheese and dairy. It was actually pretty easy. I was already kind of getting used to it, so it really wasn't that hard. And there's like a whole thing about how cheese is so addictive because there's literally addictive compounds. I don't know the exact facts off the top of my head. I'll try to find something to link below. But cheese and dairy has the same addictive chemical compounds as cocaine and that's meant to keep the baby animal wanting to continue to go back to their mom for milk because as we all know, milk is for baby cows so that they can grow. It's literally addictive. Now once you stop eating it for, what is it, the 21 day rule, your body just naturally kind of purges that addiction, I guess, so. I think it's more of a cultural thing because food and culture are ingrained, I get it. It's really hard to grow up in a Western culture where that's just what we eat, that's how it's been, and it's hard to change, but it can be done. I'm here to tell you. As a half Italian gal that grew up eating copious amounts of cheese, who thought I would never stop eating cheese, I don't care or miss cheese at all fine. So anyway, after I started doing this challenge where I was stopping uh, dairy and eggs completely, what really sealed the deal, which I'm sure you'll hear from a lot of people, is watching documentaries. And I can't get anyone to watch something they don't want to watch. I think there's a big thing about people don't want to watch these documentaries because they know what's going to be in them and they don't want their illusion of ignorance to be broken. I was the same way. The main one that it's called Earthlings and I haven't seen it because I was made aware of it after I became vegan and from what I've heard it's very upsetting and very graphic and I already know what goes on in the industry so I just didn't feel the need to put myself through that pain of watching. 
But if you want to become vegan overnight, I've heard Earthlings is the documentary to watch. A couple of my favorites are Forks Over Knives. If you are looking for a more health and environmental standpoint, I'm personally vegan for all of the reasons for animal welfare, for the effect that animal agriculture has on the environment, the amount of crops that we grow in this country that are solely to feed the animals that we harvest for meat, um, and the water that it takes to produce those crops to feed the animals that we kill. I don't want to be preachy, so I'm not going to really talk too much about it. There's plenty of information on the internet if you want to know more, but just just read up on it. You'll, it's interesting regardless. And I just watched a documentary, I think on Netflix, a couple weeks ago, ago called The Game Changers, and I think James Cameron produced it. It's all about professional athletes that started adopting a plant-based diet and just all the science behind how your body is affected and your athletic performance is affected by not eating animal products and it was amazing it was really interesting i'm not an athlete but it was still really cool to see bodybuilders and olympians taking medical tests to prove that what they were eating was affecting their body in a certain way so i would check it out i thought it was good my advice if you want to start eating more vegetarian even. I believe doing something cold turkey is never effective. You're gonna get overwhelmed and frustrated. It's best to start out slow. What I did was I just slowly started looking for replacements as I would use something up. Sometimes certain brands wouldn't be good and I would try a new one. It's not gonna be a seamless transition there's going to be gross food that you try, but there's so much out there that just try another one and I promise you'll find something you like. So just give yourself a break. There's a lot of stigma too about vegan, you know, I've gotten called out plenty of times by people that just love to be like, to point something out if I made a mistake. I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm a human being. It's literally impossible to be 100% vegan just because there's products that we rely on, medications we rely on. The main goal is to do as little harm as possible, not to be perfect. If that's anything that you take away from this, I'm not trying to be perfect, I'm just trying to do the best that I can. And if you do the same, then you know, anything is better than nothing. I truly believe anything you do, if you only eat meat once a week instead of every day, if you start buying oat milk instead of dairy milk, like anything helps, honestly. It's become so much easier just since becoming vegan myself. The amount of new brands that have come out, the amount of new products that have come out, just food science in general has gotten amazingly advanced in the seven years that I've been vegan. It's incredible. And like I said before, knowing what I know about the food industry and seeing footage of the way animals are abused and tortured made me physically repulsed by cheese and milk anyway. So it's not like I'm sitting over here upset that I can't have it. It's totally awful to me and I don't want any part of it and I don't crave it or anything. And that it helps that I found really good vegan food companies and products to eat instead, so. And, you know, even in the past year or two, you know, Burger King came out with the Impossible Burger, which is amazing. Beyond Meat is everywhere now. Dunkin' Donuts just released their Beyond Sausage. We've got Beyond Meat at Del Taco, Subway, Hardee's. I heard Taco Bell is going to be coming out with um, meatless meat soon. TGI Fridays, I'm pretty sure, has the Beyond Burger. It's everywhere, and Starbucks has every vegan milk that they make. <laughs> every coffee shop has at least two non-dairy milks. It's a different, a different rant for why they're still charging so much for non-dairy milk when I feel the majority of people are now choosing that over dairy milk, but that's a whole other topic. Even going home to the suburbs, my favorite um, pizza place, they had the, my favorite pizza. 
way back, I think starting in 2015, when my sister got married, she had her rehearsal dinner there. And I was so shocked to see that they had their own vegan pizza that I wrote them like an email and review. And I was just so happy because I just wasn't even expecting it. It was great. So, you know, yeah, I believe that the reason the food industry has grown so much in the past few years is honestly, it's all about money. Maybe some companies aren't making vegan products because they personally believe in the cause, but that's where the money is. And if that's what gets them to make vegan products, I don't care what their intent is. We're making a difference by choosing better products. So that's how capitalism works, right? Vote with your wallet. And that's what I've been doing. And that's what a lot of people have been doing. And it's making a difference. Maybe it's too little too late, but as I said 80 times already, something is better than nothing. So after focusing on the dietary side, then I started focusing on skincare, makeup, household cleaners, laundry detergent. That's probably a whole different video, but a lot of companies are not cruelty-free. So cruelty-free refers to whether a company tests on animals or not, and animal testing is very unnecessary. It's barbaric. Animals like mice, rabbits, beagles are still being tested in inhumane ways, and it's not necessary. Science has evolved. We don't need to, but the laws in China kind of dictate why products are still tested on animals because Chinese law states products that are to be sold in mainland China are subject to third-party animal testing. So even if a company completely manufactures their product as cruelty-free, if they sell in China, they are required to have it tested on animals. So that prevents some big brands from not being cruelty-free because if they were to pull out of the Chinese market, they would lose a ton of money. And that's really sad that but that money is what drives everything. So we have to continue to support um, cruelty-free brands that don't sell in China. And someone that I have been following since the beginning to help me sift through all this information is Tashina from Logical Harmony. She has researched extensively everything vegan and cruelty-free. She has lists of shopping guides for cruelty-free brands. She's constantly reaching out to brands to update their status on her website. She's just an amazing resource and if you have any doubts about if a brand is cruelty free, you can trust that Tashina has done the work. I go to her for any anything that I'm interested in purchasing, I check her website to see what the status is because she does the, the research that frankly a lot of people just don't want to do because it's a lot. And the same for products is food. Don't throw everything out at once, that's wasteful. Just work through what you have and when you need to replace it, replace it with something cruelty free. Pacifica is a great skincare brand that I love and they're 100% vegan as well. And I love trying products, it's my favorite. And luckily there's a ton of companies that are cruelty free. Actually, a huge one last year, CoverGirl was certified cruelty free logical harmony approved so i knew to trust it brands are becoming more aware of how important this is to people so it's it's becoming more and more normal and easier to find things that can work also leather and fur a lot of people when they learn about these industries they want to you know gather up all their stuff and like burn it in a pile but that's not helping anyone I still have leather boots and purses and stuff that maybe I've thrifted in the past and I treat them well and I, you know, they shouldn't end up in a landfill either. Who's that helping? But if you're uncomfortable with that, you can always donate to a thrift shop or to a homeless shelter. There's options. It's all about progress, not perfection. So just do the best you can. So that's the basic rundown. I know that was probably long and rambly, but I hope watching this has helped you see that there are small things you can do, 
because like I said, anything is better than nothing. I hope you are a little more aware now and I believe a positive example is the only way forward. Any small change is good, so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.